that what I'll be sharing here in a very brief few minutes is science that builds on over three decades of extraordinary scientific advancements in our understanding of planet Earth as a small biogeophysical self-regulating system where the ocean, the biosphere on land, the cryosphere, the atmosphere and the hyosphere all interact to determine the state, the resilience and the life support on Earth that we, since the last 70 years, have entered the Anthropocene with a great acceleration of human pressures on planet Earth. We're starting to hit the hardwired ceiling of the biophysical processes that we cannot negotiate with, but that regulates the livability on Earth. We're deep into the Anthropocene. We're approaching tipping points. We know that the Holocene, the last 12,000 years of extraordinary interglacial stability, is the state of the planet that we depend on for our world as we know it. If you put all this science together, that is what gives you the need for us to have a world economy that operates within the safe operating space of scientifically defined planetary boundaries. And we do very close collaboration across scientific partners around the world, MIT being one of them. Now, one way to summarize the diagnostic, the need for diagnostic of planet Earth is, of course, the hockey stick of temperature on planet Earth. As you all know, the temperature on Earth is a kind of an ultimate indicator of everything that has to do with the energy imbalance on Earth. So biology in the ocean, physics in the ocean, biology on land, all of it is captured actually in this curve. And what has been reported just last week is that we've reached 1.55 degrees Celsius of global mean surface temperature rise, the warmest temperature on Earth over the past 100,000 years. We have to go back to the last Eemian interglacial to find anything close to it. But what really worries us in the Earth system science is the following. From 1970 to 2014, we had, as we know, all climate science models are calibrated by, uh, by it, a linear relationship between cumulative carbon, cumulative greenhouse gases and temperature at 0 0.17 degrees Celsius of warming per decade. This is the climate sensitivity of three degrees Celsius per doubling of carbon dioxide. Then suddenly, the last 10 years, something happens. We bump up the rate of warming. We don't even know if this is statistically set as a trend yet, but we are worried. But this is the first sign of a planet losing resilience because of transgression of boundaries. There are many potential candidates to explain this. Scientifically, we don't even have the answer yet, but let me throw out the three most plausible candidates. Number one, it could be the boundary on aerosols, on air pollution, that we're actually paradoxically reducing aerosols, which is a cooling gas, which is a positive because it reduces human health impacts, but at the same time, it gives a bump up in warming. The second candidate is albedo. Is it so, perhaps, that the ice melt on Earth and the darker colors of land is simply making the planet darker and absorbing more heat? And the third candidate, which comes very close to the planetary boundary science, is, is it so that the planet is losing carbon uptake capacity? Is the ocean being so stressed through ocean acidification and land ecosystems starting to lose their capacity, manifested not least in fires, in disease patterns, in the dieback of forest systems? We've come a long way in providing the scientific evidence to set the safe operating space, which we do through the tipping point science. You have a list of 16 tipping point systems that we have been mapping. They're even in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The top five here, despite the uncertainty range you see in the burning embers diagram here, the dots you see here shows that the likely threshold for them to cross their tipping point, a tipping point means an irreversible change of these systems, is at 1.5 degrees Celsius. That's why we put the planetary boundaries slightly below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Which systems are these? Well, this is the Greenland ice sheet, the West Antarctic ice sheet, the abrupt thawing of permafrost, losing all tropical coral reef systems, livelihood for over 200 million people, and also the collapse of the barren sea ice. So here you have the science why we need to set boundaries. We also know that the journey, if we only care about keeping global mean surface temperature below 1.5, is what you see on the screen here. Please don't... Um, I see a mobile comes up here. This is unpublished data, I should say. So I share this in confidence with you. 2020 to 2100, you see the decarbonization we have to follow in gray. That's to stay within the global carbon budget of 200 billion tons of carbon dioxide. But that won't make it. We will still fail on 1.5 because the planet will take us to warmer temperatures unless we follow the green line and the blue line, which is to maintain the health in the ocean 
and terrestrial ecosystems on land to suck up carbon and heat. And the brown line is the assumption of a massive transition in the agricultural systems from source to sink. So we're talking of a global sustainability transformation within planetary boundaries, even if we care only about solving the climate crisis. So here you have it, the latest diagnostic of the nine planetary boundaries, all quantified, six of the nine boundaries are outside of their safe operating space. This, in my view, is a scientific proof why we're having trouble today. We're in a climate crisis, it's hitting us hard with the Los Angeles fires, with all the extreme events, and we're also starting to see the first signs of invoices being sent back on the slow pace, which is the losing of the resilience in the intact nature. We have now scientifically stepped up the game, guided very much by the guardians that we have on the stage here, to update this science every year in a planetary health check. So here you have the 2024 planetary health check, <clears throat> the nine planetary boundaries on the list here. It's a bit symbolically now organized in a kind of a blood sample test. We're taking the planet to the doctor, every year for a full comprehensive health check. Six of the nine boundaries are confirmed to be outside of their safe space. The arrows unfortunately show, as you see, that we're still moving deeper into the high risk zone. The seventh boundary, the ocean, is very likely going to cross its safe boundary this year. So that is not to scare anyone, but it is to give a guide for us to navigate our future. If you put all this together, we assess today that the planet is outside of the green space. We're in the danger zone in yellow, but we're moving towards the red high-risk zone. So we need friends, scientific partners, to raise this whole ambition towards stewardship of the planet. And the Planetary Guardians are, are the ambassadors for that. And here you have the QR code to the latest Planetary Health Check report. Thank you very much.